Welcome to the problem-solving session of Chapter 9, Application of International Trade. So, first problem. Let me just read this. Mexico represents a small part of the world orange market. And two questions. First, draw a diagram depicting the equilibrium in the Mexican orange market without international trade. Identify the equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, consumer surplus, and producer surplus. And B. Suppose that the world orange price is below the Mexican price before trade and the Mexican orange market is now open to trade. Identify the new equilibrium price, quantity consumed, quantity produced domestically, and quantity imported. Also show the change in the surplus of domestic consumers and producers. Has total surplus increased or decreased? So this is a good question with the help of which we should understand the effects of trade on a particular market. Okay, so let us start with A. Let us graph our supply and demand. So let's say this is our supply and this is our demand. And here we have equilibrium. So let's say the market is at the point Q1. And the equilibrium price is P1. OK. So with no international trade, the equilibrium price as is shown on the graph is P1 and the equilibrium quantity is Q1. Consumer surplus is the area A and we should think of full triangle. If we just continue our demand curve, we will see we will get a full triangle. And producer surplus can be described by the area B. So, and total surplus is equal to A plus B. So, this was the answer to A. And the answer to the next question. So, when the Mexican orange market is open to trade, the new equilibrium price is, let's say, PW. Let's take this as a line. The quantity consumed is QW. So this is our new quantity. And the quantity imported is the difference between the quantity supplied let's say this is quantity supplied and quantity consumed so the imported quantity is equal to qw minus qs Consumer surplus now actually increased. Let's add some more areas. So these are our new areas. Let's say this is D and this is E. So our consumer surplus now consists of A plus B plus D plus E. Let me just write this down. Consumer surplus is equal to A plus B plus D plus E. And the producer surplus actually decreased.
to see only. So what happened? The consumer surplus increased. Consumers are winners from the international trade in case of importing country. And producers actually lose because of the producer surplus decrease. At the same time, the total surplus increases uh, by the amount of D and E, by the amount of the small triangle here. So society in a whole, in general, is better off from trade as the total surplus increases and thus increasing the total social well-being. Okay, problem two. Let me read this. The world price of wine is below the price that would prevail in Canada in the absence of trade. Assuming that Canadian imports of wine are a small part of a total world wine production, draw a graph for the Canadian market for wine under free trade. Identify consumer surplus, producer surplus and total surplus in an appropriate table. Now, the second question. Suppose that an unusual shift of the Gulf Stream leads to an unseasonably cold summer in Europe, destroying much of the grape harvest there. What effect does this shock have on the world price of wine? Using your graph and table from part A, show the effect on consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus in Canada. Who are the winners? And losers, is Canada as a whole better or worse off? Okay, to answer this question, firstly, we need to graph our supply and demand curves. So let's say this is our supply and this is our demand. And let's do the following. Let me to put here two prices, P1 and P2. And I will explain why we are using two prices. And let us also assign letters to all the areas. Let's say this is A, this one is B, the small one here is C, triangle is D and E. Okay, so now returning to our first question. So what we needed to do, we needed to answer the question when nothing happened in Europe, firstly. And P1 illustrates our price when nothing happened in Europe. So if we will be counting consumer surplus at P1, it will be equal to A plus B plus D plus E. And the producer surplus will be C only, with the total surplus of A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Now, given that there is a shift in the Gulf Stream, which destroys the grape harvest in Europe and raises the world price of wine to P2, now we will have slightly different situation in surpluses. If our price is at the point of P2, our consumer surplus will be... If we are at the point of P2, our consumer surplus will consist of only points A and D. And producer surplus will consist of B and C. And the total surplus will consist of A, B, C and D. So basically, we will be losing this entire area we will be losing E. And if we count the change, the total surplus will be A plus B plus C plus D. So we are losing E here. The producer surplus will increase uh, and the consumer surplus will actually decrease. So consumers lose, producers win, and Canada as a whole is worse off as a total surplus also decreases. Next question. Suppose that Congress imposes a tariff on imported autos 
to protect the U.S. auto industry from foreign competition. Assuming that the United States is a price taker in the world auto market, show the following on diagram, the change in the quantity of imports, the loss to U.S. consumers, the gain to U.S. manufacturers, government revenue and the deadweight loss associated with the tariff. The loss to consumers can be decomposed into three pieces, a gain to domestic producers, revenue for the government and the deadweight loss. Use your diagram to identify these three pieces. So again, we need firstly to graph our supply and demand. Let's say this is our supply and this is our demand. So what kind of market was the auto market of US? It was importing market. So our initial scenario was we had certain price here, P1, and this was our market with a triangle in the middle representing the portion of imports. Now, what happens when the government imposes a tariff? The price goes up to the P2. And now we have this new situation here. So to understand what has happened with the surpluses, we can firstly assign letters to these areas. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And why I have separated this part into three letters? Because there is a very clear differentiation between D, E, and F. So let us firstly discuss the surpluses before the tariff. So consumer surplus was obviously all the letters in the triangle, in a big triangle representing A, C, B, D, E, F. And the producer surplus was presented only by the area G. Now, and the government revenues were zero at this particular moment. And the total surplus was the sum of all areas. Now, what happened when the government imposed the tariff? So consumer surplus dramatically decreased from this entire area to only A and B. So in a consumer surplus, we have a loss of C plus D plus E plus F. A producer surplus actually has a gain of a C. Now the producer surplus is C plus G. We have another gain which is equal to the area E, which represents the government revenue. And D and F are that way it was. So basically, what is the situation? In a total surplus, we are losing D and F. Government increased its revenue from this market. Government wins. Producers win because they increase their producer surplus by C. And consumers have lost dramatically losing C, D, E, and F. All in all, the total surplus has decreased because of the deadweight loss, which is represented by these two areas. And all in all, the country as a whole loses because of this deadweight loss. So although tariffs can help to boost local producers, 
they can generate revenues for the government, the country as a whole loses because of tariffs. Of course, you may think about different scenarios in case of different supply and demand elasticities. However, whatever the result is, you will always have this deadweight loss. PSS of chapter 9. Thank you. And as always, please like and subscribe.